Hello everyone, my name is Ashkan, and in today's tutorial, I'm going to talk about the flexibility analysis of firing systems. Uh, this video is part one, and in following weeks, I will upload the other parts about flexibility calculations. Okay, as you know, we have two main types of loads on piping systems. The first group is the force-driven loads, which we know them as sustained loads. Uh, they can be listed as weight, the, 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 the loads that comes from the weight of piping system, the pressure, which is mostly meant uh, the internal pressure that comes from the fluid that is passing from our piping system, the seismic loads that comes from the earthquakes and the movements uh, from earth or wind, for example. And the fourth category that uh, is much more complicated than the other three mentioned loads is concentrated loads. Uh, this category is uh, related to some forces that comes from, uh, for example, PSVs or rapture discs. As you know, uh, these kind of equipment may have some um, sudden movements. And in these sudden movements, some forces are applied to our piping system. So we have to prepare ourselves and the restraints and supports of our system to control these sudden loads on our piping. Okay, the second group is known as displacement driven or secondary loads. Uh, the first one and the most important part of these displacement driven loads is thermal movements. And in this session, I'm going to talk about the thermal movements and how to control them. Uh, and the second one is settlement of equipment. For example, consider a tank which is full of water and a huge tank may be settled during the, the first weeks or months of its operation it may have some uh, settlements around I don't know 10 uh, 15 or 20 centimeters and in these settlements uh, some forces and loads are added to our piping system so we have to control those loads for example by adding some uh, spring type supports for the first uh, couple of supports near the tank I, I will explain all of them in the following uh, videos and I will upload them in uh, near future. Okay, uh, base one, uh, as maybe 31.3, we have a flexibility analysis part, and in this section, uh, we have to calculate the displacement that is added to our piping system from the thermal movements, and by controlling and by calculating that uh, number, that value, we have to compare it to to the allowable stress range. Uh, a global displacement strength range that our material has. Uh, in this section, the code says that A, as you can see here, uh, when you duplicate or replace a system without significant change from another system that has uh, a successful uh, operation, uh, you, you don't need to calculate the flexibility analysis. Uh, it doesn't happen much uh, in our engineering uh, life. You know, mostly we are designing new systems with different kind of, I don't know, environmental conditions with, with, with different uh, process condition, with the different route of piping system. And it, it uh, rarely happened to uh, just duplicate a system in a new place without doing uh, stress analysis or, or flexibility analysis. Well, in section B, the code says that uh, a new system can readily be judged adequate by comparison with previously analyzed system. It is uh, just same as the paragraph A, the section A. It says that if you have uh, analyzed a system, stress analyzed a system, and you are making a new one, just like uh, the first one, uh, you don't need to do stress or flexibility analysis. Uh, both sections A and B are the same, I think, because uh, they are saying that if you are you have system or you uh, analyze the system and you're making a copy of that, making a duplicate of that, you don't need to do uh, flexibility analysis. And I think, and I think it, it is something that rarely happened. Okay, in the uh, third section, section C, it says that uh, if your system is a of uniform size and has no more than two points of fixation and no intermediate restraint exists and falls within the limitations of empirical, uh, you can use the formula 
uh, number 16 that you can see on the right uh, top of the page. Uh, in this formula, we have different characteristics. The first one is D, which is outside diameter of the pi. Uh, y, which is resultant of total displacement restraints, which is in millimeter or inches. Uh, it, it is equal to the uh, all the displacements that your system have. The L, which is develop, developed length of piping between anchors. And U, which is a straight line between the two anchors of your system. Uh, K1 is a coefficient that you can see uh, is a uh, relative. It's a proportion of SA to EAA. And SA is a global displacement stress range. And the EAA is the young modulus or modulus of elasticity of your material at 21 uh, centigrade. Okay, uh, by using this formula, you can uh, calculate the maximum allowable uh, displacement that your system can have without uh, accessing its allowable uh, stress. In the next page, you can see I have uh, drawn a shape with two anchor points in uh, red at the two sides of the shape and uh, a piping system which is drawn in black L1, L2 and L3 is uh, the developed length of the piping system and U which is the direct or straight line with, between the two anchors. Whenever uh, you have a system or a piping system like this you can use this formula for calculating the flexibility of your system. In this uh, condition if your system take uh, a new shape like the orange one because of the thermal movements of your system because of the thermal expansion that your system has uh, you can calculate the maximum allowable y which is a direct indirect relationship with your sa or allowable displacement stress range of your system your of your material okay uh, let's take a look uh, as maybe 31.3 and let me show you uh, the thermal expansion data in table C1. Okay, as you can see in table C1, we have the thermal expansion data of different materials. Uh, for example, carbon and low alloy steels has um, have different kind of different uh, range of thermal expansion coefficient in different uh, temperature ranges. For example, consider this at 50 uh, centigrade with I don't know type of stainless steels, stenitic stainless steels at 50 degree Celsius. As you can see, uh, your your uh, piping system, if it is uh, from a material of a stenitic stainless steel, it will, uh, it will be exposed to much more thermal expansion because the thermal coefficient of uh, a stenitic stainless steels is this number, but it is around 12 for carbon steel materials. So uh, you can also use this table for having uh, a background in your mind um, for comparing your piping system and its flexibility. As you can see, uh, when you take a look at this uh, slide, your piping system cannot uh, be exposed to this condition, having two anchor points without any restraint at the middle of that, because it was mentioned in part C, as you can see, without any intermediate restraint. Uh, you cannot find a system with large length that has two anchor or fixed points without any limitations or any restraints uh, through the path of the piping system and it may not be used um, very much in our calculations. It can be used in some small piping systems but when it comes to bigger networks you have to use scissor too. I will show you in, fo in following uh, videos how to calculate how to examine your piping system if it has the flexibility or the thermal expansion within its range and i will upload a new video in following weeks okay uh, but consider that your piping system goes to a way that the flexibility is not what you want and the thermal expansion is much more than your allowable displacement strength range what should we do well, in these cases, we have to use uh, one of the four methods that I mentioned here. The first one is adding elbows to your system, uh, like, for example, what you see in the uh, left bottom picture. Uh, as you can see, the piping system could be run straight 
but for controlling the thermal expansion it is uh, it is turned um, and the length of the piping system is um, changed for controlling thermal expansion the the second method is using a z-band the, th the third method method that you can see in the bottom pictures is using expansion loops and uh, the, we will use these two methods uh, method two and three in scissor two uh, it is commonly used in piping systems to control the thermal expansion and the final method which is used in um, in compact methods in compact piping systems is uh, using expansion joints the, the, the last method is uh, much more uh, complicated and I will upload a new video uh, for using expansion joints which is mostly used around the pumps in oil and gas industry uh, okay uh, thank you everyone this was the whole lesson uh, part one about the flexibility analysis in piping systems uh, as i told you i will upload new sections in following weeks thank you so much uh, please like subscribe and comment and introduce us to your friends thank you